Well, hello there. I'm Kenneth Bacor. Welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show, episode 12. Thank you very much for tuning in and watching my show. Let me get right to the stories that I have for you today. My first report is regarding EV sales updates from a global perspective. This is a report that Bloomberg put out a little while ago. They see current projections of plug-in electric cars increasing growth to 11 million units annually by 2025, not too far away. They actually predict as well 30 million by 2030 and 60 million plug-in electric cars by 2040. They actually also add to that that by 2040, the total number of plug-in electric cars are estimated to be just about 560 million, which would be about a third of all the cars globally. Now, that would be quite an achievement because currently we're at about, I believe, about 1% of EVs versus ICE-V cars in globally from a consumer a transport perspective. This forecast predicts that we're just about one generation away from the fade of internal combustion engine vehicles. I would tend to agree with that. Now, what's leading this growth? Well, a couple things. First of all, China. China is a booming EV market. It's the biggest in the world. So obviously they're contributing to the EV growth and the number of cars that are hitting the streets. But more importantly is scales of economy to do with falling battery prices. So back in 2010, a battery pack cost about $1,000 US per kilowatt hour. So they're very expensive, especially when the first Nissan Leaf, as an example, came out. Last year, those costs were down to about 209 US dollars per kilowatt hour. We know that Elon has talked about economies of scale and trying to hit that magic number of $100 US per kilowatt hour for a battery pack at Tesla. And Bloomberg predicts that by 2030, battery pack costs could come down to as low as $70 US per kilowatt hour. Of course, packs are becoming even more energy dense, offering higher ranges for new models. So that's, of course, going to contribute to more adoption and more growth. I've talked a lot about cost parity on my shows, and Bloomberg predicts that by 2024, we should see cost parity. Now, don't forget, we're also seeing a commercial rise in electrification and adoption of EVs. I've talked about transits in a couple of shows, about electric buses hitting the streets, um, courier companies and other organizations that are using electric vehicles for delivery applications and so forth. Of course, uh, Tesla with their semi and other truck manufacturers that are go, gonna, going to get into the short and medium haul uh, trucking applications from, for electrification. So all these changes, all these adoptions, all these technologies are contributing to advanced uh, uh, growth and sales in EVs, which is great. Now, for those who thought that Chatamo was a dying standard from a charging perspective, uh, I hate to tell you, but you're wrong about that. It's going to be around for quite some time. There's an announcement that came out that China um, is going to, well, China right now has two charging standards. And as I've just mentioned earlier, it's the biggest EV market in the world right now. They have two charging standards. They use the Japanese Chatamo standard for uh, fast charging, and they use something called the Chinese GB slash T standard. Now there's a development underway that these standards can be harmonized into a single next generation ultra fast charging standard that would be backward compatible with older cars that are running Chatamo and, and, and so forth. Now the deal is to be signed between the Chatamo Association and China Electricity Council or the CEC. Now the Chinese market as mentioned is the world's largest and they have over, and Chatamo itself has over 18,500 stations or chargers installed worldwide. Um, so it really is going to be around for a long, long time. But I think that this adoption of a, of a Chatamo standard will have ripple effects around the world and maybe uh, we'll see other markets looking to further increase Chatamo 2.0 standardization as an example. So let me move on to some manufacturer updates. Uh, first of all, Ford has announced that they're doing a charging cord recall. Uh, they're recalling about 50,524, if I have my numbers correctly, uh, standard 120 volt convenience charge cords. About just over 49,000 of those are in the US and, and about 1,300 are in Canada of affected vehicles. Um, they're, Ford is saying that this, these charging cords could potentially lead to a fire under certain conditions. These cords can cause high heat back to the wall outlet 
leading to a potential fire. And there have been some reports of fires in the past. These cords were uh, standard equipment with select 2012 to 2015 Focus Electrics, as well as 2013 to 2015 Fusion and C-Max Energy cars. Now the recall reference number is 18S as in SAM24, and Ford will replace the cord with the latest version. So if you have a Ford that falls under this recall, you may want to contact your dealer if you haven't been notified already and get your uh, charging cord uh, changed. Moving on to Volkswagen, more electric cars are coming from Volkswagen for car sharing purposes. I know I've talked in the past that it's hard to find an e-golf uh, here in North America. They're in very limited uh, supply if you can find one at all. But uh, there's a company called WeShare, a uh, car sharing service. And in Berlin, their establishment has just purchased or put an order in for 2,000 all-electric VW cars. Um, they're going to start with delivery of about 1,500 e-gulfs uh, in the second quarter of 2019, then 500 e-ups later in that year. Berlin is a great market for the service because of the size and population density of the city. WeShare is also going to be supporting further adoption of VW's all-new electric ID models when they come out in 2020. They have plans to offer large EV car sharing services in other major cities in Germany, Europe, and in North American markets. So stay tuned for that. And these services, of course, we have to remember that uh, use all-electric cars are a great way, actually, to introduce people to EVs. And, of course, the, the major benefit is it reduces emissions. So good on VW to uh, get some more electric cars out there. Now, I had a follow-up to a story I talked about in the last show. Um, I reported about VW, since we're talking about VW, on the recall of up to 124,000 electric and hybrid cars from, their, from the group brands, including VW, Audi, and Porsche. Um, due to that uh, cadmium uh, finding its way into charger components, and it's a poisonous material. So I reached out to VW Canada, but I didn't get a response uh, until after the last show aired. So I wanted to follow up with that story and let, you, uh, let folks know what the response is that I got. So I'm going to quote um, the response that I got here from VW. So to quote, The cadmium referred to in our e-golf is a small sealed relay embedded in a circuit board enclosed within a sealed high-voltage component mounted under the hood of the car. Restrictions associated with cadmium generally have targeted children's products and jewelry where children might put those products in their mouths and be directly exposed to the chemical elements. Now this recall in Europe does not affect Canada or the US. Cadmium is not locally restricted in automotive applications like this." Unquote. So it seems like the, we don't have to worry about that particular recall here in North America. It's only, go, only going to affect certain European markets, or it could affect certain European markets. Um, I have not heard that the actual recall has been put into effect. They're still considering that. But I just wanted to provide folks with an update to the response that I got from VW Canada, and I thank them for that response. Now moving on to Tesla. Model 3, if you haven't heard, is now available to be seen in Australia. Yay! I got lots of emails from people in Australia. Love that country. Been there many times. Great to see that the Model 3 has finally hit showrooms there. Now, of course, where there's a Model 3, there's going to be large crowds in line. As an example, the Sydney store had over a thousand reservationists come out to look at the Model 3, but it's great. I'm glad you can finally sit, feel, touch, and at least get the experience of the Model 3. Now, the Model 3s are not only in Sydney, but they, they can be seen at the Melbourne and Brisbane stores in Australia, as well as in New Zealand at the Auckland store. So congratulations on Tesla finally getting some Model 3s out there, at least to look at for now. And staying on the topic of the Model 3, um, there was a survey that was done um, for, from about just over 4,600 Model 3 buyers. And it determined that the average selling price with the ASP right now of the Model 3 uh, it's just under 60,000. It's at 59,300 USD. Now, in this survey, they identified that about 70% of the people who purchased purchased the long range version. Well, of course, that was the only one, the only one that's available at the time. Um, but mo that 70% also purchased it just with the base aero rims. And I know that when the aero rims were, were announced, a lot of people 
say, ah, oh, they're, they're ugly, they don't really look good. But if you take those caps off, actually the wheels underneath are really, really nice. So I, I believe people, most people um, looked at it that way and 70% of them bought the cars with the aero, base aero rim. So they did not upgrade the tires on that. 23% purchased the long range with all wheel drive and 7% got the performance version. Of course, the performance version has just recently been announced and available. So most likely why the number is lower there, of course. Um, within all those numbers, 63% purchased six enhanced autopilot and 15% got the full self-driving capability. And of course, we don't have an ETA on when uh, FSD is coming, probably within the next few years and purchase that license or that activation so that when it becomes available, they'll have it. So the average selling price is still a long way from that base $35,000 US car that was advertised way back when at the reveal in March of 2016. However, we know that when the base trim finally gets released, the, the standard range version, uh, I do expect that average selling price to drop dramatically down. I don't think it's going to get the 35,000 because most people are going to add some sort of options obviously to the car um, but it will it will drive that price down and it'll be good because that'll make it more affordable for many more people there's a recent report from CNET uh, who's got a Nissan Leaf as part of their long-term uh, fleet I guess for testing automobiles um, they just came out with a report saying that they've done about 4,100 miles in their 2018 Leaf right now and they routinely actually get about a real world range that exceeds the 150 mile EPA rating that's come out with the LEAF. So they're actually doing quite well in exceeding that range. I believe this car is in California. Now CNET drivers attribute that range driving a lot of it to the e-pedal functionality that Nissan offers. And they recommend to use it as much as possible. And, and they actually say that all EVs should have something similar because uh, e-pedal really works extremely well. And if you're not familiar with what ePedal does, you can watch um, my impressions of the 2018 Nissan Leaf video that I did back in April when I went up to Ottawa to drive one for a couple of days. And I talk a lot about ePedal in there. But just to summarize, it's basically one pedal driving. So as you push your foot on the accelerator, um, you obviously get your power to go forward. And when you let off the accelerator, even when you start, it actually activates regenerative braking right away. And the, the, the more you let off the pedal, the quicker you let off the pedal, the stronger the regenerative braking is. So it can be very light or it can be very strong on how you let off the accelerator. And when you come to a complete, it actually will bring you to a complete stop if you let off the accelerator completely. And the brake, then the friction brakes will activate to hold the car in that stop position all the way activating the brake lights as well. In fact, the brake lights come on if there's a 0.2 G or more of deceleration. And as I mentioned, so the e-pedal will activate the friction brakes, uh, the disc brakes, they'll stop the car. And in fact, they'll stop the car on up to a 30 degree incline or decline as well. So it's a great functionality and where you really kind of hardly have to use the brake pedal. Of course, you have to stop quicker. You've got the, the regular pedal there. So it's a great feature and it's nice to see that CNET has also recognized that in their testing and um, they recommend that people should use it and that more EV manufacturers should look at something very similar. Some news from Jaguar. Nope, nothing to do with the I-Pace. This time it's to do with their iconic E-Type Zero concept. They've announced that they're going to put that into production. You may have seen this at uh, um, Prince Harry's wedding uh, where they uh, drove it away from Windsor Castle, if I remember correctly. Uh, there was a shot of them driving it away. So it got a lot of air time and press, and I guess it got a lot of interest because of that. So Jaguar has announced that they're going to produce these. Um, this classic Roadster will come with an all-battery version that'll have a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack which will provide about 170 miles or 274 kilometers of range i believe that's epa range um, the only aesthetic change to the car will be the addition of led headlights and the interior will have a new digital instrumentation cluster and optional infotainment system game okay, because it's uh, it's based on an older car with traditional rotary dials and all that kind of stuff no pricing has been announced yet, and deliveries are supposed to start in the summer of 2020, as these will be built to order. So if you uh, are going to put an order in for one, and uh, let me know, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about what you think of this, this uh, car. Certainly looks like a nice car to have to be driving down a nice windy road on a beautiful summer day. So good luck for Jaguar on that. Well, I know I've talked in a 
previous show about availability of electric cars. There's been so much demand that a lot of them are hard to find. And included in that mix is the Chevy Bolt EV, in some parts anyway. In some other states and areas, you can get them. Uh, but in Europe, the Chevy Bolt is actually called the Opel Ampera E. And in Europe, I know it's a little tough to find those. Well, one reason could be because Coca-Cola has just snatched up a whole bunch of them. They've placed an order for 100 of these uh, for their company car fleet to be used at their Norwegian headquarters. Um, they're going to get these 100 cars, and they're also going to install 176 charging stations there uh, within that headquarters. So this is one of the largest deployments of electric cars in a company car fleet. So glad to see Coca-Cola jump on board with that, and I hope we see more organizations um, that do deploy the use of company cars look at electrification for those. Now, you may not have heard of this, these car, this car manufacturer, but there's a new player entering the U.S. market. It's called Candy. It's K-E-N-D-I, Candy Technologies Group. They're a Chinese company, and they're partnering with a Dallas, Texas-based auto parts company to sell their all-electric compact SUV and subcompact cars. They have a compact SUV called the EX3, and the subcompact is called the K22. Um, not really original names, but I'm sure they're functional. Don't have any technical details on these cards, other than that their charging port settings, the software system language, and the user interface have all been upgraded for U.S. market needs. Now, it's estimated that these vehicles will cost less than $20,000 U.S. Uh, it's a great price, especially for a compact SUV. And they'll be sale in Texas. They'll be for sale in Texas to start, at least soon. Um, no information on other markets yet, but I'll, I will keep my eyes open on that. Um, I'm not sure you know, what quality and what service and support is going to be like on these cars because I have no familiarity with them since they're, they're right now in China. But it, it's, again, it's a, it's a, it's, if they're well and they hold up, and especially in those hotter climates or there's more temperate climates as well in those states, there'd be a great way for people to really look at uh, EV adoption from an affordability um, aspect, especially if they come with some decent range and features. So stay tuned and we'll see what happens with, uh, with Candy. And for something completely different, again, on the last show I talked about an electric jet ski. So staying with that nautical theme, I wanted to talk about a Finnish company called Q Yachts OY. They've introduced an all-electric day cruiser yacht. Its first model is called their Q30, and it's equipped with a, either a 30 kilowatt hour or a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. You've got the option of either to choose. Depending on which pack you get, it could provide up to 42 or 80 nautical miles of range. That's 48 or 92 miles if you're trying to do some conversion. And I didn't do the kilometers. I'm sorry, you'll have to do that one yourself. That's at a cruise speed of 9 knots. You'll be able to get that kind of range or 10.3 miles per hour if you're converting that. The top speed of the boat is 15 knots or 17.3 miles per hour. Now, it uses an OceanVolt AXC20 electric motor, which provides 20 kilowatts of continuous power. No pricing or release date yet, but uh, as you've seen by the video behind me, it's a sweet looking ride. It should, uh, should do okay in those markets, especially in the European, and I'm sure they'll probably bring it over to the US. But again, nice to see electrification, not just in the cars, but in other um, areas of transportation, be it consumer for business or recreational as well. So let me get into the mailbag. Always love the mailbag segment. Now today I've actually got something a little bit different. Um, uh, I want to just slip in here a video interview that I did with a good friend of mine, actor John Hedder. Uh, you may know him from various films and uh, uh, let me roll this video interview that I just did with him a few days ago. He's just adopted electrification into his life and uh, you'll hear him talk a little bit all about that. Now, I do want to apologize for the sound. It may be a little hard to hear at times. I've tried to fix it up as much as I could. I was in a large conference center with a lot of people, so it was a lot of background noise, but uh, here you go. Here's my interview with uh, John. So, hey guys, it's Ken here. I'm at a conference in the U.S., and I ran into an old friend of mine, John Hitter. Hi, John, how are you, buddy? I'm great, how are you? Good, the reason John's with me is because he's an avid EV guy now. Hopefully you'll know John from movies such as The Bowie Dynamite, Ghost Team, Blades of Glory. Uh, They're like else? Ghost Team? Uh, we don't know what that you is. You don't know what that is? <laughs> well, you can say others. But uh, the reason I'm talking to you, John, is because we communicated about a year or so ago, and you yeah. were telling me that you're getting to electrification. And 
and uh, oh, is that what it's called? That's what it's called. Electrification. Electrification. Is that getting into electric cars? Exactly. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know getting that. Into I'm learning right now. And you had mentioned that you had recently got into a Chevy Bolt. Yeah. And so yeah. what I wanted to kind of get for our, uh, my viewers is just your your perception of, of how that fits into your life and you know, what your thoughts are regarding it. Well, for me, it's great because I live in Hollywood and of course you do. Well, know. Hollywood. But I live actually just outside, about a half hour. So we, my family and I, we moved north about a half hour, where it's a little bit more family friendly, yeah. up in San Jose. Yeah. 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 So this was like, and I had like, I had another car, just a regular, I had a Sentra for like 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. It was fine, it was great, and I was happy with it, but my wife was just like, she's just sick of it. It was like, I never really up to kept it. I didn't care, it was a car I just didn't care. So it was actually, I was gone for like a week in the summer last year. Last year, yeah. I come home, and like the classic car commercial, there's a car with a big old bow. Oh, nice. And uh, and I got this brand new bow. Was now, your birthday I, no? She said early birthday present. It was like months before. I love it. But we had talked about it because I was like, you know what? I wonder if, because I, I had a buddy who had gotten, I think, a leaf before. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know what? I like your car actually would be kind of cool because we have a minivan. We have like a, we have a number of kids, so you gotta have the minivan to yep. cart them around. Sure. I was like, and I can go long distances, but as an actor living about a half hour from the valley and all that, I was like, electric car would be perfect because then I could like I could take that. Sure, it's like it's more limited in its mileage than a typical gasoline car, but that's all I need. Because if I'm going for an audition, a meeting anywhere. I could go to Santa Monica, I could go to out, downtown LA, I could go anywhere and go anywhere I want to for a day and just come back every night and charge it. I was like, that's, and so she got it and I was like, all right, and I've been loving it ever since. It was, it's just like, you know, I love, for, like you said, I love the torque. I love the zippiness of it. I've never had it. We call that the EV smile. The EV smile. Torque, you know? It is. Yeah, like, I got in it, I was like, I mean, it's like after driving, uh, what a two-cylinder, I don't know, whatever the center yep. is, no, and it, like there's no jump or push to it. Right. And also, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, this is great. I love so it. it fit within your lifestyle as far as yeah. the use for that. You have a home charger, obviously. Yep. Yep. So your home is your gas station now, basically. Yeah. And you can probably go a couple of days without charging that. Yes. Yeah, the bolt's got a yeah. 200. Almost 240 mile range. Just yeah, so. yeah, on a good day. I mean, yeah, that's typically. I've never. The closest I've gotten to empty yeah. was about like 20 miles. Oh yeah. And I was sweating. You a were getting bit. nervous, yeah. And yet, but I thought I was going to be getting down to zero, and yeah. it was still like 20, 25 yeah. miles yeah. still left. I was like, this is great. Do you use the regenerative braking as well? Do you notice the difference? I do it all the time. Yeah. I do that. I'll do like. I mean, in the beginning, yeah. for sure, you have that like you're kind of sweating because yeah. you're like. Or you're just always like watching, watching. How am I doing? How am I doing? And now I've like I've gotten so used to it, kind of feel. Yes. Yeah, I'm going this far. I'm going this downhill or yes. this much. Yeah. Like I'm fine. I'm yeah. Good. And do you, you plan a little bit if you're going to go a little longer? Do you look at planning your room a little bit? I plan more for than sure. Before? I'm yeah. like oh, yeah. like if like the other day, like a couple weeks ago, I went down past Long Beach. Yes. Okay. I was like, all right, this is gonna be a trip. And it's a hot, it was like during the summer, so it's hot. Although, the heat is actually better. I've noticed like, like it's yeah. better because your score that you get is always well, like right. better when it's higher temperature. Yeah. So. yeah, well, a GM, they have a pretty good uh, active thermal management system yeah. in, in, the, in the bolt, so yeah. keep the batteries a good temp. And obviously warm, not too hot is good for the batteries, obviously. But it regulates the temperature of the battery. Yeah. But the, the ambient temperature can work well, too. So. But the, uh, the whole day, I was like, all right, then I make it, and I ended up still having like 80 miles left. I was like, right. this is great. I've never had a problem where I was like, oh, have you ever gone to beyond the range and using some of the fast charging that are out there? Because California has a lot of pretty pretty comprehensive fast charging network. Oh, so I've never. Uh, I I well, we didn't get the DC upgrade. Oh, okay, on the okay. Car. That's why it's an upgrade. Yeah, so for us, so we didn't get we didn't get the upgrade, so okay. charging would take longer. Yes. But knowing that, we're like, it's fine because I yeah. charge just as long as it's out there, yeah. and I charge at home. But it's great because I can use the electronic 
like all the parking spots yeah. and just plug in. Exactly. Um, okay. And uh, it's great for that. And it, I mean, it's been perfect for my lifestyle. Excellent. Just out there, it's easy. And he, I was telling him, like, even better is that overall we're saving because my wife, you know, if I, I'm home a lot, and I'll say, if you got to go run errands, take the bolt. And I'll, you know, I'll be home with the kids because they can't fit everybody in the boat. So therefore, she's saving on gas. I'm saving on gas. We get the the HOV lane upgrade, so I can try and get yeah, big time in California. If you've and ever uh, driven in LA, yeah, HOV oh, yeah. is gold. Yeah. Plus, you get the whole all the discounts with the uh, the electric company. Okay. So we have the peak hours where we're like, all right, we'll charge at night. We'll do all our all our electric. Like we'll do, we'll run the dishwasher. We'll run the washing machine. Yeah. All that night, because uh, during the day, then it's a little more, and it's great. Have you seen, been able to figure out uh, what your cost savings are, maybe percentage? I, I, I couldn't tell you right now. Maybe a quarter of what your gas would have cost you. Um, I know. I'm always like, honey, how are we doing? Yeah. She's like, we're saving money. Okay. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. I don't think it's. Yeah, it's like maybe twenty five percent, but yeah. the yeah. fact that it's already better. Yes. Yeah. It's great. Great. Well, thank you very much for sharing your experience. I want to a lot of viewers. Oh, no, it's great. You know, a lot of, a lot of people that are looking at electric cars are wondering if it can fit in their daily lives, if it can, how. Yeah. And you created a great example, so I appreciate that. Yeah, it's great. I love it. As always, it's great to see you, buddy. Good Thanks, man. Yeah. All right, thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview. John's a great guy. He's really down to earth, and he's just, again, extremely excited to have um, that Chevy Bolt in his uh, stable of, of cars. He's got four kids, as he mentioned, and uh, and I believe a dog. So the minivan certainly is their prime vehicle. But he's he's been using it for many months now, I think almost close to a year, and just loves it. So just a good use case of, uh, of where electrification could fit into your lifestyle if you don't have a car today. Um, there's a good example of where it could. So thanks, John. I appreciate you giving me the time to tell me about your story. And as always, I'd love to get more emails. I'd love to hear comments, of course, or uh, look at the comments on YouTube, but also to get emails. You can email me at evrevolutionshow at gmail.com. Uh, please follow me on Twitter. You can message and contact me through Twitter at evrevshow is the Twitter handle. If you're not already subscribing to this YouTube channel, I would love it if you could. And don't forget to click that bell icon because uh, once you click it, you'll get notified automatically when new shows are pushed up. As I mentioned a few shows ago, I started doing audio podcasts, and I originally put them on iTunes and Google Play. I've also put it up on YouTube as well, so you can just uh, stream the audio through YouTube and listen to those podcasts. And thanks to a, a viewer suggestion a couple days ago, um, they've just put they've just been put on tune in radio so if you have a tesla i understand they come or you can get the tune in radio app that comes with uh, the tesla cars you'll be able to now download and listen or stream my audio podcast just search for ev revolution audio podcast and they'll come up and i'll be working to do my next one within the next week or so and of course i thank everybody that's supporting me already uh, through the Patreon campaign, and would, and would always love support if you feel up to it. You can go to www.patreon.com forward slash EV Revolution Show and check out uh, my page on if you're thinking of supporting. So thank you very much to all my supporters and to and to you, all, all the viewers out there. You're the ones that uh, keep me going and uh, get this show on the air and uh, keep me energized to continue to report on the fascinating world and ever-changing world of the EV and the revolution that it's bringing. So until next time, thank you very much and take care. Mm -hmm.